same for software developers as well as for ml engineers these are the different topics and for each of the topics i'll also tell you the common question ml system design round which is different from the software dev system design round as your years of experience is going to increase ml coding round data science is actually more broader than ml engineering it is a more niche role hi guys a lot of people are finally upskilling and diving into mlai but this is also a very competitive field. So if you're serious about working as an ML engineer in any of the companies, it can be for the big companies or for the startups, then you should obviously know about the interview process. And that is exactly what we'll do in this video. We'll talk about the different rounds that are usually there in the interview process for ML engineer role. And we'll talk about the common topics that you should be studying, the common questions that are usually asked. And we'll focus on how the ML engineer interview process is different than the interview process for software dev roles. We'll also talk a bit about other roles like data analyst, data scientist, ML ops, and I will try to answer all the common questions that usually students have. So I hope you're excited. Let's get started. Interview process typically starts with a phone screen or a recruiter screen round, but that is not very technical. So first let's focus on the technical rounds. Coming to the first proper technical round, that is actually same for software developers as well as for ML engineers. Can you guess it? Yes, it is DSA. And yes, you heard that right. DSA is expected from ML engineers as well. I know some of you might already be thinking, why DSA? Why do ML engineers need to study DSA? See, the concept is same. ML engineers should also be good at problem solving and logical building skills. Plus, think about it. As ML engineer, you will be expected to write code, right? So you will be expected to write code efficiently. You will be expected to optimize a code or debug the code. And all of this is tested in DSA rounds. DSA rounds are considered like proxy for understanding whether you can think like an engineer. And after this DSA round, it is like a filtering. And after this, all the other rounds are like ML focused. Plus, if you have already started studying MLAI, then you would know about it a bit. Like for example, if you have watched the land graph video, what is it? It is entirely graph based, right? Data structures or in vector databases, the nearest algorithms. It is all DSA in the end. There's a lot of DSA involved in ML. And this is like the filtering round. So yes, DSA is not going to leave you to become an ML engineer, especially in the big companies, you need to know DSA. And the rounds are very similar to the rounds for software developers. The timing is also same, 45 minutes to one hour. It is usually 45 minutes. The level of the questions, again, differs from company to company. It can be medium, it can be hard. Uh, usually two medium level questions is the expectation. So everything is same for this round for software developers as well as for ML engineers. Let's continue to the ML rounds now. Before we move ahead, I would just like to say something. Say if you're preparing for DSA or if you're preparing for software dev roles, basically LLD or HLD, or if you are getting into Gen AI and you are exploring it and you want to work on projects, or if you are working on some projects which are MERN based and you want to deploy them and want to build really good projects for your resume, then we have courses and edit courses. See, these are not just any other courses. Trust me, let me tell you about them. Just give me one minute for that. See, we have added testimonials of all our students and we have also tagged their LinkedIn for credibility. So you can check that out. You can check out the curriculum. Everything is mentioned on the site. All our courses are very, very beginner friendly, very, very intense. Five weeks, six weeks courses, right? Plus our hands-on courses, Gen AI and HHLD. So awesome. Like if I was in your place, if someone was teaching like this, I would definitely sign up for that. And that is something to say, like, I would love it if someone could teach me like this live. So these are basically recordings of the live classes and you also get access to all the future batches, all the past batches, you get access to the Discord community where I am available, my team is available to help you in any way possible. So all of this is available. At least check out the details, the curriculum, the testimonials and everything. And for now, let's move ahead. Companies usually have one to two rounds focused on ML concepts. Now you could be having one round focus on the breadth of the concepts, one round on the depth, or just two generic rounds or just one round. But there is so much that they can ask and I will create a separate video dedicated to the cheat sheet of the questions and how to prepare for them. But let me give you an idea. So these are the different topics and for each of the topics, I'll also tell you the common questions. There can be questions focused on basics of model selection and supervised learning, like classification versus regression, overfitting, underfitting, bias variance trade-off, uh, questions on regularization and so on. There can also be questions focused on model evaluation metrics like accuracy versus precision recall or loss functions like log loss, ME, MSE and all of this. 
You could also be asked about common algos like linear regression, logistic regression, decision trees, XGBoost, random forest, KNN, K-means, PCA, and so on. You could also be asked questions based on data handling, like handling missing data or uh, standardization, normalization, one-hot encoding, embeddings, uh, different ways of embeddings, and so on. You could also be asked questions on the basics of probability and statistics, Bayes' theorem, conditional probability, central limit theorem, and all of these topics basically. Probability and stats is obviously very important. If the role that you're interviewing for is relevant to deep learning, then obviously they can be questions related to deep learning, like basics of neural networks, the different kinds of layers that are there, activation functions, back propagation. You could be asked about loss functions, when to use what, like cross entropy, MSE, and all of this. You could be asked about optimizers, again, when to use what. You could be asked about RNN, CNN, LSTM, transformers, basically all these NEI basics. Other than these topics, there can also be questions based on production concepts, like pipeline reliability, model versioning, retaining strategies, A-B testing, and so on. The next interview round that typically happens is the ML system design round, which is different from the software dev system design round that you might have heard of. So first, let's talk about what is ML system design. As the name suggests, here you're supposed to design an end-to-end -end ML pipeline. So here we'll start talking from data ingestion, basically how the data is going to enter the system, to data pre-processing, to model training, to model evaluation, deployment, monitoring, the entire end-to-end -end pipeline. Coming to the most common ML system design interview questions that are usually asked. So you could be asked to design something like a recommendation system for say Netflix, YouTube, Amazon, Spotify, or a feed ranking system, again for say Amazon or say for social media platforms like Insta. You could be asked to design a fraud detection system, a spam detection system, ad click prediction system. This is a very common question. Again, this can be for YouTube, for Spotify, for any of these uh, common apps, right? So I plan to cover all of these common questions on the channel. So guys, what other reason do you need to subscribe and share? Don't you think I deserve it? I am creating so much of free content and there's a lot of effort that goes behind it. Please consider subscribing and sharing because a lot of this content is actually not available and a lot of research goes behind it. Don't make me convince you more. Please do it. No, share it. Subscribe. Come on, do it. Also comparing software dev system design versus ML system design. I hope you understand that there are going to be some common things, some similarities in both the system designs. Like for example, in both the cases, we will discuss say scalability, reliability, latency. These discussions have to happen in all kinds of system design discussions, right? So these will be the common things, even in terms of interviews. In both the cases, we will have a broad question and we have to communicate with our interviewer to drill down to the exact requirements. Like for example, in software dev system design, the question can be design YouTube or design Amazon. In case of ML system design, the question can be uh, design recommendation system or ad click uh, prediction system, right? So again, in both the cases, it is very broad and you have to communicate with the interviewer to drill down to the exact requirements and design accordingly. So the common principles are going to be there, but the core focus is actually different. Like for example, in software dev, what is the core focus? The core focus is on microservices, on API design. So there is one request, then there is business logic, and there is response. And then because there is like networking happening over there, so the discussions happen around networking, around databases. Here, the entire focus is on model lifecycle. So here, the focus is on data flow, pre-processing, model evaluation, model training, and all of this, right? So the core focus is different, but obviously there are going to be a lot of similarities and how you handle the interview is also going to be very similar. So these are the common technical interview rounds that usually happen for ML engineer roles. Let's talk about the entire interview process once. But before we do that, let me give you a disclaimer that obviously this is going to vary from company to company, from team to team. There is no proper guideline that, okay, this will always happen. It can vary, obviously. I hope that is clear. This is the usual process, okay? So in the starting, the first thing that happens is, say, a recruiter screen round where the recruiter gets in touch with you or maybe someone from the team where they're going to analyze your background. Some basic technical questions may be asked to just see whether you are ready, whether you are the right fit for the role or not, whether you are even ready for the interview or not, right? So that is like a very basic filtering that happens. Then one to two DSA rounds might happen. Then one to two uh, ML concepts round, one to two ML design rounds. Just like software dev, 
here also as your years of experience is going to increase the focus on ml system design is going to increase so there might be one or two ml system design rounds according to your years of experience and according to the team requirement and after all of this there is usually a behavioral round which is again common to the software dev roles where you discuss things like leadership team collaboration and all of that so this is the usual interview process i'm again saying that some companies do things differently and there might be some extra rounds for a few companies like for example you might be given a case study or a home assignment where you might be given say a ml pipeline to be built or to be analyzed similarly there can be a ml coding round where you might be asked to write code like for example implement some particular ml algos now these kind of assignments and these kind of rounds are pretty rare but it really depends on the team that you are getting hired for various companies have their own expectations meaning and the definition of the roles data scientist and ml engineer now this might be also used interchangeably in a lot of companies that they essentially have the same work to do but let me explain you in strictly in terms of like you know definition definition how do they differ see data science is actually more broader than ml engineering let me give you an example uh, suppose we have a lot of data so data scientist is going to have the business intelligence also is going to have the idea of business insights what data to analyze how to analyze and is going to decide which model is going to work for the business ml engineer on the other hand might not have business intelligence might not have the business insights and clearly focuses on the model how to build it efficiently how to evaluate it how to scale it and all of these things right so ml engineers focuses not so much on business insights versus data scientists is supposed to take care of analytics and a bit about business as well so strictly this is the meaning but in a lot of companies you will see this discussion happening online also uh, that the roles are often just the same and there is no difference between their work also you might have seen this in dev roles as well right that some people might just call you software engineers instead of software developers or they might call you full stack engineers even though you are not full stack engineers right so these are very precise terms don't get into so much of detailing so it really depends on the company that you're getting hired for data analyst is usually a slightly different role it is a more niche role data analytics comes under the umbrella of data science let me explain to you a bit more see data analyst is not going to be dealing with ml models they are not going to uh, build ml models or train them or evaluate them their work is more focused on business logic they have better business insights they have more niche idea now their work is going to be analyzing the trends understanding the data visualizing the data and more about stats so they are going to be dealing majorly with say excel sql a bit with python they are going to be creating visual dashboards like uh, using power tableau or power bi and so on so they are not dealing with ml models they are dealing more with the business things and analyzing the trends and helping with making the decision the difference between ml ops engineer and ml engineer is kind of similar to the difference between the roles of software developers and devops team you must have seen in startups developers themselves to the deployment and there's no separate devops team which is similar in the case of uh, startups you might see that there are ml engineers who are responsible for deployment and all and there is no separate ml ops team versus in big companies there might be a separate ml ops teams where they are focusing on deployment monitoring so they are basically dealing with containerization orchestration so docker kubernetes and all of this so this brings us to the end of the video i hope this video gave you a nice high level overview of the interview process and the differences between different roles and i hope you like the video you found it helpful Also let me know if you are interested in the ML system design playlist I am going to continue the usual tutorials where I write the code build apps and all of this so that is going to continue but I am thinking of a different playlist for ML system design altogether and cover all the common questions that are usually asked in the interviews let me know if this is something that you would find interesting and if you are finding my content helpful again I am almost begging you please do subscribe I mean I really think I do deserve it but see you next time hi thank you